Hello guys, uh, this is Serendipity, Serility, Polaris, whatever you want to call me again. Uh, this is an updated tutorial because somebody did post a comment that they finally did change some stuff with the UI and they changed stuff with the tutorial and how it starts and all that stuff. So I did want to go over that. Um, now I will say when you make a new character in this game, uh, the tutorial is completely different now. Um, you should be put into a tutorial that teaches you the basic commands and stuff like that if you are again creating a new account and stuff like that and you're a new player. Now if you're a returning player or if for some reason they didn't give you a tutorial when they're supposed to because I know that this game is very inconsistent with that type of thing. Um, if you take a look at the top of my screen it says mission map and then it shows the M key. I believe that's the default key for the mission map. So we're going to hit M right now. And you'll see at the very bottom left, I'll circle it with my cursor right here, is the tutorial. If you are a new player and for some reason the tutorial didn't work, or you're a returning player and you want to see if they made any changes to the game, combat-wise and stuff like that, I would recommend checking out the tutorial. Um, and again, if you're a new player, uh, or it's still fairly new before they updated this, so like if you played a week before this most recent update came out, you still might be new to the game and all that stuff. So. Again, they just uh, revamped the tutorial completely. It is uh, a lot different, and actually, I'll go in it just to do it with you, um, just sort of show because there are some things I think that it doesn't really do that great of a job. It's better than what they previously had, but again, it, it still needs some more. So right here, it shows you the controls. So it shows you it's W A S D to move, which is pretty conventional. Uh, w W to rush or sprint. That's what I call it. Uh, I don't know why it says jump is set to none. Uh, it's actually set to, set to spacebar. Uh, hopefully it says that on your screen when you do it, but um, or when you do the tutorial. But in my case, it says none. It is spacebar. Normal attack is left click. Special attack is right click. And to zoom in the camera or zoom out, you use the scroll wheel on the mouse. So that's pretty simple. Left click to confirm. And then it says basic attacking tutorial. Left click to do normal attack, right click to do special attack. So then essentially, uh, and we'll do left click to confirm, it will have you approach the target, which in this case is this uh, AI right here. And I believe it has you do some very basic combos. Um, now this one's sort of hard because the command line is correct. So for example, the first one says left click, left click, left click. Uh, here's the thing, uh, they revamped sword, so it's actually really hard to do that. You have to mash left click really fast to get this command to come out. Because if I, if, you can even watch my screen. If I do it, if I'm a little bit late, it'll just immediately go into, and it, it marked it correct by the way, which is the funniest part, but that's not the right command. You want to mash left click. It should not look like this, or it, sorry, it should look like that. That's what the command should look like. It should not look like this. That is the wrong command, so do keep that in mind. Um, and then it says uh, space, and then this is just the aerial combo. Very basic. On this one, it just has you hold RMB, which is your high break command, and then just release it. And then they have you do your shift attack, or your dodge attack, whatever you want to call it. It's just doing that. Shift and then left click. Very simple stuff. This is where it sort of introduces you to the idea of a chase attack. So there's a command that goes into a chase, which is uh, left click, left click, right click. That goes into chase. So if I hit spacebar right after I launch them into the air, I can then go for the chase combo, which is just your aerial LMB. It's the same thing. Now they have you use some skills uh, for sword. The, these are the default skills. If you hit uh, E, it activates Storm Slash, and you can, it says you can use while moving, so that's just to say that when I activate this skill, I can still move a little bit while I'm using the skill. That's all it's saying. Um, and then, for my R skill, which is the Leap, uh, it says after deciding an area, essentially that means that I can choose where I want this to go. There's this white circle. This white circle shows where my Leap will go. So if I'm all the way over here and I want to get all the way over there, I can left click once I have the area I want selected, and I'll leap there. And then finally, you have normal skills. These are what I call like quick activation skills. They don't require any aiming. You can't move during them. They just do uh, whatever they're supposed to do as soon as you activate it. So in this case, I throw out a uh, fragment strike is the name of the skill. It stuns the opponent, and I can go in for a follow up, stuff like that. And now 
it introduces introduces to you uh, the idea of switching karmas by hitting tab. Uh, that is what the default key is. So in my case, if I hit tab, I switch to bow. Hit tab again, switch back to sword, and finally back to bow. Next, it has you do basic combos with bow. So in this case, it's actually a lot easier. Left click, left click, left click. Knocks the enemy down. Perfect. Uh, the jumping one is a bit hard because there's actually a multi-hit. Uh, if you pause between the second and third left click, you'll do the multi-hit. So this is not the right command it wants you to do. You want to mash left click, so it should do this. And you'll do the little backflip. That's what it's looking for. And this one was actually a little bit hard because I didn't even, for some reason, the timing's off. So it wants you to hold RMB and then left mouse charge, but you don't actually want to do it too long, like you don't want to pull this back too long, it wants you to do it a lot quicker. Don't charge it all the way. Just RMB, left click for a little bit, release. You're good to go. And then finally it has you do the bow shift attack, which again, just shift, left click. Launches them up. All good. And now it introduces you to bow chase attack, which is very different from sword. Um, also notice you cannot tab during this part. If it shows that message, it means you're hit, trying to hit tab. Um, yeah, so this is the bow shift attack, left click, left click, right click, spacebar, and then hold down left click. And finally, it introduces you to the default bow skills. So uh, the first one, E, is a raining arrow. Um, this is similar to leap in that you have to select an area in a white circle. Once you found the area, you just hit left click, and it'll shoot the arrows in that area. R is another quick activation skill, you just hit it, and it does it automatically, you can't do anything else. Um, and then you have F, which says after deciding a direction. This just means, so when you activate the skill, first of all, this is siege mode, it's the F skill. It launches people up, which means you can hit them in the air, but you also can you know, turn around as much as you want. Um, and then you just hit left click. You can either charge with left click, or you can just tap left click to do it. Um, and now this is the defense tutorial, essentially how do you get out of combos and stuff like that. It doesn't teach you everything. This tutorial still doesn't, I don't think it teaches you about Rage Break. At least the first time I went through it, I don't think it did. Um, but it does teach you about, apparently they call it a break fall. I, I, most people will call it a tech roll. That's all it is. Um, also, don't hold a direction when you do it, but so if you are launched into the air, as soon as you hit the ground, if you hit left click, you'll do a tech roll. So see I did a tech roll right there. So we'll do it again, it'll launch me up again. Do another tech roll. Boom. Done. And now it'll talk about the emergency evade. So I'm getting hit right now. If I hit shift, I can get out of the combo for free. It burns a little bit of stamina now. They made a recent change. It used to burn mana and now burns stamina. And you can use it to get out of a combo. Assuming you are on the ground. You cannot shift out of a combo if you're in the air. Do keep that in mind. I talk about that in my combat tutorial, I think. Uh, you cannot shift in the air. Does not work. If you get hit in the air, you cannot shift. Alright. Anyway, so we have Rage Bar and Rage Skill. So this is where they should introduce uh, Rage Break. But they don't. So... Yeah, you know, I'll talk about that a little bit after I complete this, but so I'm going to hit left click to confirm. So, it's going to show you how to use bow uh, rage skill. I wish they had you do both bow and sword rage skill, but anyway, if I hit Q, I go into the stance, and I can aim in any direction. To uh, fire off the ult, I just have to now hit left click after I hit Q. So, it activates that animation, and I shoot the bird forward, and that's pretty much it. Um, and this counts as the tutorial being complete. However, again, I want to go over the fact it didn't talk about Rage Break. As soon as your Rage Bar is full, um, similar to how you got ult there, if you are getting hit while your Rage is filled, while your Rage Bar is filled, you can hit Q to break out of a combo for free. It'll only consume your Rage, it'll consume your whole Rage Bar. You can hit Q while you're being attacked to get out of a combo. Why would you do this? Because you can't shift out of the air, but you can rage break out of the air. So if you are caught in the air, then and you have your rage bar full, make sure to hit Q to get out of the combo. So do keep that in mind. Alright, so 
Now it's going to load us back into the menu. Um, and actually, I'm going to switch channels right here. Oh, no, I am in channel 5. This is good then. Um, so now, if you're a new player, after you complete the combat tutorial, it should hopefully bring you into a UI tutorial. At least that's what it said it would do. I'm not too sure, um, but I'm hoping that's what it does because that's what they said in the patch notes it should do. But if it doesn't, we're going to go through them here again. So I have, take a look at this button. I'll highlight it in my cursor right down here. It turns blue, right? I have it set to you. I don't believe that's the default key. So whatever key you have for this button down here, I want you to hit it. So again, in my case, it's you. And this will bring up your manage character screen. Now you'll notice as I go from rank to karma to equipment to emotes, uh, the window on the right changes. And that's because they merged these windows together. They're all attached to the same button, which again, in my case, is you. So we're going to start off from the left with rank. This just shows you where your current rank is on the leaderboard. Um, or not on the leaderboard, but it just shows you where your current rank is. Where are you in the ranking system or the ranking hierarchy in this game? Because again, this is a primarily a PvP oriented game. So there are different ranks in different stages. Uh, similar like an Overwatch or Valorant or stuff like that. So do keep that in mind. Um, and then also the letters are down here. Uh, these show each rank. So again, bottom rank is E rank, top rank is G rank. And then if you click on them, you'll see the rewards for them uh, or for ending off the season in that rank. So if I end off the season in A rank, I get an emote. S rank, I get another emote and I get the Lium ore. G rank, it's another emote and more Lium ore. So there's that. You also see uh, your statistics, how much you win in each game mode, CTF, Deathmatch, and Conquest, um, how many yeah, how many wins you get, your average kills, average KOs, all that good stuff. Then we click on Karma, and we're introduced to the Karma screen, as well as your Manage Karma screen on the right side. So I'll start with the left side first. This is where you actually switch your Karmas. This is where you choose and select your uh, karma and essentially your loadout. Uh, you know, this is so right now I have a ruler of darkness and I have the new karma soul of Magus uh, here. Um, and I can switch them out. So, like, if I want to switch back to sword, I can just click on sword here. Um, yeah, I just click on the actual icon, it brings up this little menu, and I can choose what karma I want. Um, so, I'll switch it back to scythe for now, or ruler of darkness. And these are your skills. So this is where your rage skill is, which again in the t in the tutorial we showed off Bo's rage skill. And every karma has two to pick from. Um, and so this is where you can get access to both of them, and you can select which one you want to use at any given time. And these are your regular skills. Again, you have six to choose from in this case, and you can choose where you want them to be placed. Also. From left to right corresponds to your keys, so in the tutorial you saw I had E, R, and F skills. So this is my E, this is my R, this is my F. Same thing for the secondary karma over here. Which, if I hit tab, I can switch to the secondary karma. You'll see that it's highlighted in blue, depending on which karma I'm on. And of course at the bottom right here are basic stats. Uh, this just shows you how much attack you deal, what's your physical, magical defense, how much HP do you have, all that stuff really nice. And then over on the right side we have the Manage Karma window like I said before. This is where you have access to all the Karmas, their skills, and all that beautiful stuff. Um, so let's look at Scythe here actually. So this, there's this tab called the Karma Skill tab under the Manage Karma window. And this is essentially the skill tree for that Karma. Um, and you'll see from level 1 to level 5 and if you are a new player, you will most likely be starting out with your Karma being level 1. So like if I'm on Sword right now, I only have it at level 1. All the other levels are locked. And I can level up to the other levels by increasing my AP. You'll see I have this AP bar. How do I gain AP? You gain AP by doing PvE missions, PvP missions, um, survival, pretty much anything that you do in this game. You will be awarded with AP. So that you will essentially need to grind AP to get to the next level. And then once you get to the next level, you can unlock the new skills. Do keep in mind, however, if you want to unlock a skill, there is no order to it anymore. There used to be an order. There is no longer an order. So, for example, I have these uh, skills or passives I can get right here. And I can, you know, I don't have to unlock the stamina increase to get to the gain resource. I don't have to. I can just go straight to the gain resource. But... 
do keep in mind, when you are unlocking one of these new passives or skills, uh, it does cost DP and CP. What are those? Those are two resources, and you see how I clicked it shows my required CP and my required DP. CP is your primary currency, essentially. It is just like currency points. I don't, maybe combat power. Not combat power, that would probably be a bad acronym for that. Combat points. I don't know. It's the main currency. And then DP is a secondary currency, um, which you can get from doing PvP missions primarily. You can get some from doing PvE, but there's a limit on that. Uh, if it, In terms of PvP, though, it's unlimited, so it's the best way to grind DP. But you will have a required amount to unlock a new passive or skill on the skill tree, so do keep that in mind. Alright, now we have Karma Option. So, Karma Option will only unlock for your Karma once it's reached level 3. This is where you can roll stats. I'm not going to talk about stats in this. I'm just going to talk about, again, this, this is a very basic tutorial, so do keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, so this is where you would roll your stats for your karma. Um, they don't apply to other karmas. So all these stats that I have here are on my site. They don't transfer to my other karma. So these are only when I have that karma equipped. So as soon as I hit tab in game and I switch to my Soul of Magus, I'm not going to have these stats transfer with that. So do keep that in mind. It's exclusive to the karma. Um, and now we have the command info. This just shows you all the basic command strings and all that stuff that each karma has. It's actually really useful if you're a new player because uh, I know if you go into the training grounds, uh, sometimes it shows you, uh, I think also in regular missions, it shows you on the top right of the screen what your actual commands are. But sometimes it misses out on a few of them. It doesn't show all of them or it's just not as detailed. This is where you will find the most detailed um, command string and command info. And if you click on one, it even shows you a little video on the right side of what the commands look like and all that stuff. And finally, we have the Karma Hero. Uh, this just shows you a little bit of the background behind the NPC or the hero that represents each Karma. So in this case, for Scythe, it's Dio Burning Canyon. And for the new one, the Soul of Magus, it's Adele de Floretta. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it there. Now I'm going to switch back to the left side or the left window and I'm going to go to Equipment. This is where you have access to your inventory. There is no inventory button. In order to access your inventory, you have to bring up your managed character. Now, as you can see, this is where all your costumes are, all your accessories. This is also where you have more in-depth stat info. So not only do you have your max HP and your attack power and stuff like that, you have your HP recovery, what's your stamina, stamina recovery, mana, all that good stuff. Your defense, your endurance, movement speed, again, all the detailed stuff, it's right here. Um, and again, this is where all your weapon costumes are, your base costume, or your outfit, and your accessories. And of course, you can access your inventory here, um, on the right side, where it shows you all your weapon costumes, your regular costumes, or your outfit, your accessory, and your unique slot, which is essentially where all your consumable items are. This is where all your consumable items will end up. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And now if we go back to the left side, finally we have emotes. So this is where you can essentially uh, use different emotes. Um, your emotes will show up in the consumable part of the inventory. You can just, uh, when you click on one of these, it'll show you all the emotes you have. And you just click on the one to put it into the slot. You can access this by holding down uh, left control in the lobby or in a game. So I'll show you that as well. Uh, the status motion. Everybody starts out with the same status motion, which is nothing. You can unequip it. You get a regular status motion like this. You can buy status motions from the item mall, which I'll show off later in this video as well. Um, and then we have an emote. This emote uh, essentially plays at the end of any mission you do. So it, assuming you win, it will not show if you lose. But if you win, you will be shown uh, doing this emote. So in my case, it's a coin flip emote. So yeah, there's that. And that's pretty much there. So again, I'm going to show you if I hold control, you'll see this wheel come up where I can access all my emotes. They're also tied to the F6 through F10 keys, as you can see. All right, next, I have the R key. I'm going to try to go as quick, or I'm going to try to go as quickly through this as uh, I can, since I know that this video is still going to be long, but I'm trying to make it shorter than my previous tutorial. So you have challenge. 
this is your seasonal level. It's like a season's pass type of thing. But there's a free season's pass, which everybody has access to. That's all the top rewards. So everything you see on top of this blue line right here, free players can get this. But there is a season pass you can purchase, which the button will appear down here where you can buy it. Um, and if you buy it, you get access to all the rewards on the bottom of the screen, or on the bottom of the line. And again, this goes all the way up to level 50. It's a seasonal level. And um, how do you increase your seasonal level? Well, a good thing you asked. Uh, as you can see on the left side, if you go to rank, probatio, monster, or karma, these are all achievements, almost like Steam achievements, but they're in-game achievements. And every single time you complete one of them, you get 100 SP, or seasonal points. And the seasonal points contribute directly to your seasonal level, and the more achievements you complete, the higher your seasonal level becomes. Um, now, there are daily challenges that you can get, which have a much bigger seasonal point attached to them, as well as a magic stone, which you can use to roll stats. Uh, you also have a weekly challenge, again, uh, this will show up every week, which has even more than the daily challenge, 2,500 seasonal points, which is also really nice. Um, and then if there's ever an event, um, which there hasn't been in a while, but if there ever is, sometimes they have event uh, missions and, or challenges, and they will appear here. Uh, they can have certain prizes connected with them. Sometimes they're seasonal points, sometimes they're just like emotes and other things. So yeah, there's that. If I hit R again, I have the friends list. This is pretty basic. This shows you where all your friends, uh, all the friends you have, who's online, who's offline, who's in a mission, who's in a party, all that stuff. Recommended friends shows you who you recently played with. Um, so if I like played a PvP match with a random, this will show you who that random is. So you can like click on their name and friend request them or something like that. Sure, I'll friend request that person. Why not? Um, and it also, you can click to see their chaser info, so there's also that. Um, and then of course you have the friend request mailbox, so if anybody sends a friend request to you, this is where it will be, uh, where it will appear, and you can just click on their name and then it'll say accept or decline essentially, so there's that. Next, there's the guild tab. I'm not going to go too much into this. You can create a guild here. Um, as you see, it costs 10,000 CP. Uh, you can set the name, all that stuff. All good. Recommended guild shows you a guild list, I think, of the most active guilds or who has the most points, which you get points for your guild by just doing missions, essentially. Um, so yeah, there's that. I, th I think it's the AP. I think it's the amount of AP you earn, which again, you get from doing literally anything. And then the guild list just shows you all the guilds, not just the top guilds. And you can even search for a guild for a specific guild here. Um, and if you click on any of them, you can see the guild info, members, all that stuff. And actually, I believe this is where you apply. So if you click on a guild, you can hit apply, stuff like that. All right, cool. That's that done. Now we have, in my case, I think the default key is something else. Uh, but it's this button right here that I have highlighted in blue, whatever key that is, if you press it, in my case it's P, it opens up the KP shop. This is an item mall. Essentially, this is real life money. You spend real life money to buy real li uh, or virtual items. It's basic stuff. You have costumes, weapons, some um, very potentially pay to win boosters, and you can even just buy yourself all the way to level 50 on the season's pass because there's bundles. Yeah. Uh, this section over here is not too good. I'm not gonna lie. I I'm not gonna get into the KP shop. It's it's got costumes and other things that it probably shouldn't have uh, that it shouldn't have, but it's there for anybody who wants to spend real money. And then finally, uh, I guess not finally yet. Uh, we have enter. This is your chat. Um, you can hit tab to switch chat channels. So if you have a party, you can hit tab to go to that. Or if you're in a guild, there will also be a guild chat which you can hit tab to access. And then if you hit escape, you have access to the character list, the select channel, which will allow you to move channels. Um, the Steam inventory and marketplace, I'm not going to go over. These are inactive. They aren't supported anymore, so don't bother with them. Uh, you also have the advertisement on the right, which usually shows off what's currently happening. And also settings, exit game, and help. Uh, there's a receive DLC button, but if you're a new player, don't worry about it. Um, 
And then the help button just allows you to essentially report anybody. So if, if you see anybody in a game that you want to report, or you see a bug or an issue that needs to be reported and you want to bring it up to the devs, that that's what this help button is there for. You can click on it and it will take you to a menu um, where it asks what are you looking for or what do you want to report, uh, and you can do the rest from there. Alright, now I'm going to quickly go through everything in the lobby since uh, everything else is done. Also, actually, I guess I should note, the challenges also appear on the right side of the screen, so you can see them right there. And also, if you actually hit uh, Alt to bring up your mouse, um, you can hit the challenge mode right there, and it'll bring you right here. I guess I also forgot to mention, you can hit Alt to bring up your mouse. Uh, you can either yeah hit Alt to bring up your mouse, hit Alt again to get rid of your mouse. Um, all that stuff. Uh, there's also attendance events going on, so those appear in the top left. I'm not going to get into that. Alright, so let's go around the circle this way. So we have the Hildad's Cube. This is where you can craft items, um, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go into this because, to be honest, I did it in my old tutorial. It's the same thing. If you if you really want to get more in-depth stuff, you can go watch that video because it's the same thing. It haven't changed Item Option Swap is new. So if I click on this, this uh, Item Option Swap, uh, you need an item option swap ticket, which I have right here, and you can essentially change the stats, but, or swap the stats between any two costumes, accessories, or weapons. Um, they don't have to be the same type, so I think you can transfer a weapon, well, actually no, I do think they, they have to be the same type. So you can only transfer a weapon to a weapon, a costume to a costume, accessory to accessory, all that stuff. Alright, so... Now we have the Tome of Knowledge. Um, again, there isn't really much that's changed here from my last tutorial. This is where you dye stuff, like you can change the color of your costumes and all of that. Uh, and this is also where you can roll your stats. What stats do you want? Do I want to re-roll? All that stuff. Use magic stones here. This is where you would use magic stones. Alright, and then as we keep going along, there's the library that is currently unused. Here is Ensure for the 1,000 people who ask. She doesn't do anything. I don't know why she is here in the lobby. She does not do anything. There, there's, uh, she's just there. Yeah. Uh, and then finally we have the trading post here. Uh, the trading post allows us to... It's essentially the in-game marketplace. So this marketplace that shows up here is not... This brings you to the Steam marketplace. This is no longer supported. The in-game marketplace is supported. Um, and again, here you can sell and buy stuff from people, costumes, accessories, consumables, all that good stuff. And again, you can sell stuff here. Uh, some items are sellable, some of them are not. So for example, these items, it says cannot be traded. If it says cannot be traded, you cannot sell it on the marketplace. We have the mailbox over here. Anytime you do the attendance event, uh, or there's just an actual event going on, any rewards from those events will appear in the system mail. Uh, the trading post mail will allow you to collect the money that you got from selling your items on the trading post, uh, or at the trading post, so this is where you would receive those um, as well. We have the Stone of Honor over here. This allows you to see where everybody is in the rank system for Season 4, as well as where everybody was in previous seasons as well. Um, and also at the bottom, it'll actually show you where your position is relative to everybody else, and also shows you where your, what your rank is, and your rating, uh, and what karmas you've used the most, and all that stuff. So, there's that. And then, as we're getting very close to the end, we have the CP shop over here. This is where you can buy very basic costumes, and accessories, and weapons. There's no consumables here. I don't know why this tab is here. There's nothing here. Uh, so don't worry about that. But there are some costumes and accessories and all that stuff here. Maybe a little bit expensive, though. And they all cost CP, so do keep that in mind. And then we have your loot boxes over here. So you can get loot boxes or advanced supply boxes from the attendance event, or you can buy them from the KP shop with real money, um, and you can open them here. They'll go to your inventory, and then you have to, op you have to go here to open them. So there's that. And... Last but not least, we have the training grounds. I'm not actually going to go in, but this is where uh, you will essentially, or where you can practice your combos, test out your karma, stuff like that. Um, 
it's the same map that you're in for the tutorial. Uh, so that map that I was in for the for the tutorial, it's the same thing. Um, so do keep that in mind. And that pretty much wraps it up. Again, uh, oh yeah, I have a timer. It's about the same length as my previous video. So, well, I tried my best, but I hope you, I, I hope this helps somewhat. Again, I tried to do this as fast as I can. Uh, but th there still really is a lot to go over. The, the tutorial still needs work. It's not the best. People are still lost. I don't blame them. Um, oh my god, I, I almost <laughs> I almost didn't go over the rest of the mission map. Uh, if I hit M to open up the mission map, these are where all the missions are. You have Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, Conquest, Scout, Raid, and the beta which switches between two modes every 30 minutes. Each of these have their own rewards, which you can see here. This is where the AP, CP, and DP is, as well as these consumable items. Each uh, mission has a different amount of each of the rewards and stuff like that. Uh, the monster missions, or the raid, or the scout missions have boxes with them that give you accessories and costumes. Um, yeah, it is pretty much, and the magic stones you can also get from some of the modes. That pretty much does it. Uh, Again, you can also access training grounds from here. You can do a custom mission, which is essentially like a free room you can make to uh, essentially battle other people if you want, um, or create a private room to fight people, test out combos and other people, stuff like that. And anyway, guys, so now I'm going to call it the end of the video there. Again, I hope this tutorial helps. Again, it was rushed, but you know, and it's long because the game, there's a lot that the game has to offer and the tutorial just really doesn't go over that much. So again, I hope that this helps uh, and until next time, I will see you later.